distinguished guests, Artist Nick Whittle, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honor and a delight to have been invited to deliver the feature address at this evening's opening of Nick Whittle's timely exhibition, Other Lives. Something tells me, however, and Janice just gave me a hint, that many of you are thinking that the invitation to speak may very well have more to do with my new job title as opposed to my world-renowned thesis on the visual arts or my vast connection of little works. But that's okay. Truth is, I've been an ardent but quiet fan of Nick Whittle's work for quite some time. You see, I'm generally fascinated by those who possess talents so great and deep and accomplished that they get to express themselves in their chosen art form visual artists, dancers, musicians. In fact, all artists, artists, and artisans. I envy them silently. The closest I have ever come to playing anything is playing the radio. But I think I'm pretty decent at it. So I've followed Nick's work and admired his skill at making us pause and think and sometimes even feel a bit uncomfortable on edge because he has dared to express himself. He has dared to take on a topic and say, state, express what we often wish we had the fearlessness to say and express. But I find that there is also a freedom when you expose yourself to Nick's work because while he is at pains to articulate the vision, his inspiration, his method, historical story of each of his pieces, there is always a space left for each of us to add our interpretation and emotion, thus making us feel as though we get it. There is an almost visceral connection to the artist and the work and its intent and impact on you. And this latest exhibition of Nick's falls perfectly into the schematic of his previous showings. History meets a perennial hot topic, meets passion and emotion, meets a jolt to the senses and intellect, all soothed by the generosity of the host, the artist, Nick. So take your time, take a look, take what you want from his narrative on life, past, present, and future. Now, the history slash story of slavery is carefully laid bare before us in Nick's other lives through a series of what I've found to be poignant yet stark juxtapositions. So you have pain and prosperity. You have peril and purpose. You have black and white. Confinement and space. Our past and our present of course, trauma and triumph. It's all movingly captured here. Slavery and the slave trade is not a lighthearted, sexy topic. It ruffles feathers. It takes us into dark corridors of our past that we're not too keen to visit. It opens murky, blurry vistas that make us uncomfortable, making us see each other and notice things like skin tone and accent and nationality before we even utter a word to each other. And so 185 odd years after its abolition, we are still grappling over what is the amount owed to the descendants of the enslaved and who should pay it or if there is a price to be paid at all and lots of other topics. But the discussion cannot disturb the history it is there, and despite distortion and quite often skewed depiction, its facts, its chronology and legacy are unchanged. And it is within this framework that Nick Whittle challenges us, challenges me, challenges each and every one of you to face an era of our past that touches us all. He starts at the beginning, the trip across the Middle Passage. In the belly of the ship, 
The first zone takes its title from the open boat in Edouard Glissant's Poetics of Relation and recalls the ship, the sea, and the arrival. And we've all seen images of slave ships crossing the Atlantic filled with human cargo, profit, and prosperity guaranteed through pain, uncertainty, and sheer emotional torture. Bodies, actual humans, packed like sardines in a seafaring coffin. A literal death for many, a spiritual death for millions more. And the symbolism of the coffin is woven throughout this exhibition, referencing the annihilating power of colonialism, which reduced hitherto free, proud, powerful, in Bajan parlance, powerful Africans into cargo and chattel, human conduits to untold wealth for the masters and unprecedented exploitation for the enslaved. The vast majority of the wall-based works were made on the lids from boxes holding coins taken from our very own central bank. And so the sense of connection between our past and present is sharp and immediate. I actually began to look within a little uneasy in my skin to ask myself, is it still slavery today just dressed differently? Is money truly the root of all evil? Concomitant with that dark adventure across the sea was the loss of key items that marked the jurisdiction of origin of an individual. And so not having had time to prepare and pack for that life-altering trip, tangible symbols of food, religion, fashion, and ritual were sadly left behind. And so the sculptural work of Nick Ancestors is a large installation of monkey pots symbolizing the immense and far-reaching loss of African genealogy and of course the literal loss of lives. African souls drowned during the perilous crossing of the Middle Passage. The wall-mounted piece drummers pays tribute to the resilience and flexibility of African knowledge and culture. Vestiges of African culture endured and triumphed over all attempts to deny and delete its existence. And when met with the inventiveness of its Caribbean-born descendants, it happily merged to form a Creole culture, out of which came Pan and Turk and Calypso and Spooge and Soka and Dancehall and Bashman, and all the like rhythms and rhythms in between. And that's just in the area of music. Legacy, memory, and memorial are also dominant themes in this exhibition. And Nick challenges us to acknowledge that slavery has left its mark on all of us, regardless of country or complexion. And it dares us to work our way individually and collectively towards understanding and accepting and eventually, hopefully, moving towards healing. He uses objects from nature, from our daily habitat, as symbols of memory and memorial, often expressed as public or private rituals, healing rituals in particular, healing and cleansing. And here is where I find that space I told you about to insert my own thoughts and interpretation. And I've expressed them in the form of questions. Is it time? Am I ready to face the facts of slavery with eyes wide open as opposed to squinting? Consuming the full story instead of only nibbling on the portions that I find most palatable. Can I find a place in my soul for both the dark and the light of slavery to peacefully coexist? Am I ready to acknowledge that it is not just my story, that I share historical and emotional copyright with both the colonist and me and my fellow colonized. And if I'm ready, then shouldn't I also be comfortable with the fact that a remarkable artist has taken me on a journey of self-rediscovery, an artist who just happens to be white and of British descent. 
Are these two normally predominant markers of difference now merely coincidental? My questions, and you will have yours. But I will commit to working through and finding my own answers. I may tackle the easy questions first and may leave some unanswered for now, too uncomfortable to deal with them at the moment. And you too will have your own dealing or not dealing with the themes and truths in other lives, but to view it as just art for art's sake, for purely aesthetic pleasure, is to do both the artist and you and me, his audience, a great injustice. Because way beyond the purest discussion of technique and texture and theme and talent, there is a conversation, a moment of reflection, and a lesson in the exploration of self. And so thank you, Nick Whittle, for my history, our history, for dragging me back to a bitter past that on any given day, I'd rather forget. Thank you for challenging me to envision a soothing of my soul and the promise of peace. <laughs>